Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. Miami's hot, 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 hot fire. <clears throat> Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another review. Oh, it's the last review until next season. Real Housewives of Miami, season six, and this is episode 20, and this is the reunion part three. So, this is going to be the closing of the season and the reunion, and I'm sad. <laughs> I am actually legitimately sad. This was, I'm not gonna lie, this franchise kind of got me through the winter. It did. It did. Because typically around this time of the year, I usually go south. I usually do not stay in winter ish weather. I usually need to be outside with some shorts and hiking and a whole bunch of things and all the sunlight. But I will say this, we've had a pretty mild winter overall in the Midwest, so it wasn't as bad as it could be, but yeah, <laughs> I do have something planned for fairly soon for me to really kind of get my life and kind of give myself some sun, so there's that. Um, more to come with that, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to review The Real Housewives of Miami, and let's get into it. So the reunion resumes with... Larsa and Gertie. Um, Larsa is telling the other women, uh, and pretty much the outcome of Larsa telling the other women about Gertie's diagnosis before Gertie was even given the chance to. Basically, taking um, Gertie's moment and making it her own. Yeah. And she's still doubling down. Don't she? She she says she's apologized multiple times and all that, but. She hasn't, number one. Number two, is the apology, is it genuine or not? Nah? Um, we'll put a pin in that because she does eventually apologize. But I want you to keep that in mind as this reunion progresses. Of If you really think that this, gen if this apology is an apology being genuine or are you apologizing because of the backlash? Because one thing about someone that's like a Larsa, she pretends she doesn't care what people think, but clearly perception's reality, right? Someone who lives her life on Instagram and lives her life as like a social media, um, that pretends social media is real life, like a Larsa, you be the judge. Anyway, so while this is, while they're kind of going back and forth with that, Andy asked Lisa what she thought about it and Lisa is, of course, being lost, Larsa's mascot and or soldier, in the words of Gertie. And Lisa says that she confronted her and said, you know, you were wrong for that. And look, the thing is, Gertie is just going off of her. <laughs> Gertie's getting Lisa together and really calling calling a thing a thing and saying that you know lisa your focus was only on how larsa felt about the situation not about how i felt which even on camera it showed that when she was trying to talk to gertie about what's happening and when she told when she told gertie that larsa told the group what was going on she still was literally only going thinking about it from larsa's standpoint and not gertie's standpoint and not once to ever see her change her view on that. Anyway, but while this is happening, um, because <laughs> Gertie's like, stand down, soldier. Stand. She's like, okay, mascot. Here's a mascot going again, calling her, calling Lisa a mascot. And Lisa's like, you are so mean. And uh, Kiki and <laughs> Marisol's reactions were sending me. They're just like, oh my gosh, not a mascot. <laughs> And then it turns to Lisa and um, Gertie going back and forth. And, you know, I just mentioned Lisa, pretty much um, Gertie read her for Phil and telling her stand down soldier. And she also said, <laughs> you're the person who's taking out your anger on everyone else, except for directing all of your anger to, Len to Lenny directly. I was like, ooh, that's a breeze. <laughs> 
But then um, Alexia does try chime in to try to reason with Larsa and say like, hey, like, you know, just trying to like make it make it make sense why Larsa still is be being playing the victim here. And Larsa is being defensive and then it's just like, OK, yeah. And, and saying basically to Alexia, girl, you need to sit this one out. And it's just like Larsa. I guess I don't understand people who are like Larsa. Um, even if she's doing it for TV, I don't get it. Like, I don't get it. I guess I would never think it would be okay to tell someone else, tell others about someone else's diagnosis. Unless you don't want to be friends with them or cool with them ever again. Or you're, or you're done with the situation. To me, that would be the only time where you really can do that. Because you don't care about them. But if you're really trying to be, if you really are friends or family with someone... You don't just tell other people about what's going on with them like that. That's kind of rude. Um, and I'm saying that even from like my personal standpoint. Like I've had situations where I was dealing with people. Um, I didn't tell people about what was going on with them until after I was done with the situation. And then after that, I was like, well, this is why things were the way they were. But pretty much explaining it through my POV. But at that point, I'm explaining it that way because I will never talk to them again. <laughs> That's the only time where I would ever do something like that. And that was literally. So it's just to me, it boggles my mind. And cancer especially, I would never do that. That's wild. That's wild. But anyway, especially if it's not impacting you personally. I would understand if it's some type of behavior issue or something where it impacts others and you, then you have to like say like, hey, you might be judging them in a weird way and this is not what you think it is. And then that's when you would probably need to explain things if they don't open up. But that's also in the case where it's impacting other people. But Larsa never did make it make sense for me on why she did what she did. She tried to say she did it because she wanted the ladies to rally together with her. But if that was the case, she would not have told other people that were not part of the group. You know, she she could have saved herself if she would have just told the group of ladies on the show and that's it. But even then, that's still, it's still giving thirst. So anyway. Um, but this whole entire time while all this is happening by, backstage, mind you. Marcus is acting like a Nepo baby fanboy, like Larsa fanboy, and it's so annoying while like Jody is just looking on. And I hope, by the way, that this franchise come the reunion next season, either invite all the men and, or don't invite them at all. I don't, I did not like that they kept panning back to Marcus because I didn't even know Jody was there until this part because they didn't really show him that much, which is the right way to go. And I think they're only really showing Marcus because he is my, how does it feel to be really only getting screen time time because of your dad and your dad only not because of anything that you built or done. I just, I just, I wonder how does that feel? Cause that's, I would feel away. And anyway, not that he would feel great because he's a whole bunch like, Oh, I just never thought I would. <sighs> I wouldn't, I never thought I would dislike a person that quickly through two hours worth of television. Well, basically three, because it was three part reunion. I never thought it would take that for me to realize it. Like the relationship that I don't believe, by the way, um, it was already giving cringe, but now it's just kind of like, oh, I can see how y'all actually would be together if this was real. I can see it now because he really is like a, a Nepo baby, but like not in a positive note at all, which bothers me to my core because we need more, you know, black and brown Nepo babies, but not that kind, not a spoiled, so like entitled brat who looks down on ladies who actually, I don't know, made a name for themselves by them making a name for themselves and not living off of someone else's legacy. Oh, my bad. Lars is doing the same thing. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I forgot she is too. But child, anyway. 
So while all this is happening, I got way, way distracted because this segment just kind of annoyed me. But he kept saying this whole entire time he wished he could be on the couch so bad. And the thing is, we know you do. We know you wish you could be on the couch so bad. You are so attention seeking. And what were you going to do, Patricia? And for those who know, you know, because he's giving off Patricia vibes. Peter from Real Housewives of Atlanta vibes. Why do you want to sit on a couch with women and be in women's business like that? I'm just waiting for a good answer on that. Anyway, so then Nicole and Larsa, um, it goes into the segment of Nicole, um, you know, talking to Larsa about Gertie's diag um, cancer diagnosis because Larsa questions, asks Dr. Nicole, um, well, approaches Dr. Nicole and questions if um, Gertie's cancer diagnosis was real during the season. And it just get it's just it's wild how insistent someone can be. Now, I will say this though, and take this with a grain of salt. From a real housewife standpoint, wilder things have happened. Let's not get it twisted. Like Brooke <laughs> from which was Nikki's ex boyfriend or whatever from Real Housewives of OC. Yeah, he totally did fake a cancer diagnosis. We know that. We know about cancer gate. But like in normal real life, most people would never do that. That is wild to accuse someone of that, especially someone that you're so-called building a friendship with. Like, and us as black people, typically, I, I, I know there's exceptions because not all skin folk are kin folk, but us as black people, we're not going to fake a diagnosis like that. That's like, that's, that's, that's playing with death. You don't do that. Culturally, that's just something we don't do. But anyway, this the segment does end where they're not good. They're at the show and tell status. So like, yeah, Lars is saying words, but basically Gertie needs to see some action behind the words. Okay, so next, the next segment is a Kiki segment and child. Okay, let me say this side note wise. I'm hoping based off of what they, the time that they gave Kiki, they're going to make her full time next season. It seems like they're going to, because I will say this overall, the reunion wise, it really seemed like they really kind of gave, they, they gave, um, they gave Adriana the friend of treatment completely because they didn't really show any segments that had anything to do with her or anything like that. Um, uh, Marisol, she was also still kind of given friend of treatment, but just not as bad as Adriana. But I also think, I don't think um, Andy likes Adriana too tough. I don't think he likes her. I think he tolerates her because of her relationships with like Emilio Esteban and like the music and whatnot. But I think if she didn't have all that going on, I don't know if he would really care to have her on the show or not. It, it, it just gives that kind of energy and vibe. And also, too, I think Adriana can stay on the show as long as Julia's on the show because Adriana and Julia are besties. And um, Andy loves Martina. So I think that is a thing. I'm, I'm just observing it. I was noticing, it especially during this part, it was kind of giving obvious through this, this reunion especially. But anyway. So... Back to Kiki and not to hijack Kiki's moment. Um, Kiki had a huge segment this time around. So we talked about Kiki and her new man. And um, we find out that Kiki has, you know, intentionally stopped dating for like three years because she wanted to find the right person. And girl, I'm with you. I'm in that intentionally not dating right now thing too. And because I, I want to be way more intentional about all that. <laughs> um I think for the longest, I would hop from relationship to relationship and I am, I'm off it. <laughs> I'm done with it. And I, 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 we see each other on that. But we do find out though, that Marisol actually is one who helped Kiki find her um, boyfriend. Like she was going to set him up, set her up and it all worked out. And Gertie has met him. Um, it's the only one in the group who's actually met him virtually I think Marisol has to. I couldn't really quite tell because I kind of skipped over that. 
But then Andy then um, asked um, Kiki the status of her relationship with her dad and stepmom. It's still in a not good place. Um, we find out um, more of why the relationship was wild and fractured. It wasn't just about the modeling. There was a lot of things going on. And she kind of elaborates on it a lot more here. So the stepmom... From what I gather, never saw it for um, Kiki. Because what actually occurred, which we weren't able to find out during the show, is that Kiki's um, dad left Haiti to find opportunity in the United States and then formed a whole entire new family with this woman and has three kids with this woman and Kiki's from part of the old life, if you can read what I'm saying there. And apparently it's pretty common in Haitian culture that some of the men will just leave their old life behind and form a whole entire another family while the other family is still there. So while all this is happening, mind you, Kiki's mom is none the wiser. She thinks she still has her husband. She thinks everything's still together. And then we find out that her Kiki's dad had the audacity and the unmitigated goal once Kiki's mom was actually in the United States. Say, oh, yeah, this is my wife. Yeah. Married the other woman and everything else while Kiki's mom the whole entire time is thinking that her and her, and her dad are still together. So basically, he was living a double life. But not really because he literally left the Haitian family in Haiti for dust. Messed up, huh? Yeah. So, um, and the lady's reaction was just like mine. Like, wow, that's messed up. And the whole entire time, I actually was kind of observing this. And I think next season, this is me thinking ahead. I know I'm skipping, a skipping around a little bit here, but, you know, bear with me here. I think Kiki and Lisa are going to be friends. I think they're actually going to be really close friends. Because I know this here especially. They have a lot in common. And they don't even know it. <laughs> That's the wild thing. They have a lot in common and they don't even know it. Because we forget. At least I did. I forgot a lot of Lisa's background prior to Lenny. Because we've been shoved the Lenny lifestyle and her and Lenny down our throats for so long. We forgot who Lisa actually is outside of Lenny. I mean, yeah, Lisa is from Canada. But her family, her mom's side is Jamaican. So she comes from a Caribbean family as well. Because even though they said Haiti, I don't think that is just that island. That might be a Caribbean cultural thing. Let me know in the comments if that's true or not. Because I've heard similar stories with that before with um, Dominican people, um, Cuban. I've heard that from other islanders of like men being, well, trash. <laughs> Doing trash like behavior because that is trash. It doesn't care what cult. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. That's messed up to do that kind of thing. But it seems like kind of a thing. And hell, in the United States, you hear that like that happens sometimes. Sometimes men are just garbage. Um, I mean, look at Lenny. He's basula too. So, but just from that segment alone, when they were talking, I noticed whenever Kiki's talking, Lisa's especially more engaged now and is listening a lot more. And I think, yeah, I think the backlash had a lot to do with it, but I think because of the backlash, she actually is truly actually trying to be engaged um, in what's going on. And Lisa does share later on in this segment that she's in a much better place. So I can see now that she's actually paying more attention to her surroundings. She's all like, oh, oh, wow. But that's my prediction for next season. I think they're going to become good friends i think it's gonna be like lisa gertie and kiki kind of being like a crew and then also julia like i think i think really kiki's gonna be kind of like the cynthia bailey of this group as some i think she's gonna be the one that everyone loves type thing i just i just see it 
I see that. I see it. But let's go further into Kiki's story. Yes, we're, we're, we're taking a deep dive in Kiki because you know what? You, you deserve all the flowers and I want you to be full time so bad. And I'm hoping the Bravo universe sees it. Even the execs see it and say, Hey, make her full time. Do a whole entire new thing for the real housewives, like intro for all the, the housewives. Um, if you want to make everyone on the crew full time, awesome. But I don't know about how the budget's going to budget, but I think y'all need to put the money, put the money up, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up. Cause I also am curious cause I know live views, Miami doesn't get the best live views, but I don't know how much views it gets replay. I feel like a lot of people still think they're on Peacock. So I think that's part of the issue. And Bravo does not do a great job of advertising this franchise, even though they literally are the best franchise. Like they're my favorite. Like I didn't, I, I know I'm going off subject here, but like I reviewed, I watched this reunion. This is like the third time I watched it. I watched it twice for my own enjoyment. And then I went to actually watching it to review it. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Okay. So I know I went on a whole entire tangent, but just like, by the way, if y'all think this review is going to be hit or quit it, you're at the wrong place. You might want to go to another review. I'm about to deep dive Real Housewives Miami because it deserves it. It's it's just that girl. But anyway, let's move it on here. Um, so we find out though because the stepmom did what she did and kicked up. Because what what also happened was the stepmom kicked Kiki out. But I think the stepmom really kicked Kiki out because of that's not his. That's not her daughter. I think it had to do with that. I think it had to do with some BS like that because I've that is, that story is old as time. Unfortunately, I think that's really what happened with Kiki. But then also too, during the season she shared it was because she became a model. And in Haitian culture, they're very very religious and are not cool with like you being look like scantily clad. Like it can be, it could come off as pornographic. Um, corn. It could come off as corn. So, yeah. Anyway. So, we find out then also that the younger sister from, her, you know, the stepmom actually started reaching out to Kiki to you know, basically build a relationship. So, th there is a silver lining because this show, the younger sister is actually trying to reach out. But the reason why the younger sisters or her siblings were not reaching out is because of mom for, the stepmom forbid it. That's why it wasn't happening before. But hopefully they do patch things up here. But basically, long story less long with Kiki, even though it is a really long story, what I just said right there, she's worked away from the bottom. And she was able to basically work her way up, move to, you know, work her way up in the United States and she was able to relo finally re relocate her mom in 2012 to the United States. And she takes care. Of, she doesn't just take care of herself. She takes care of her mom, her mom's side of the family, because Kiki is the only child. And in Haitian culture, whoever makes it to the States first is the one who's in charge of the whole entire family. So she, her responsibility is pretty heavy. It weighs heavy on her. And, um, which will explain her breakdown that she has later on here. So they also do talk about the swim week event and the women, and the women bailing on her. And Kiki gets really, really emotional over this segment because I feel like Kiki has always been trying to find a sense of belonging because she has worked her way from the bottom and has made her way to the top. And, you know, I feel this way too, to a certain extent. I can get how she feels this way. When you come from humble beginnings, even though your life changes, your mindset doesn't change right away. So you kind of are like, like, do I belong here? Should I be here? And because they're on this show that is Real Housewives, these women are just basically putting on. You know, because some of them aren't doing what they're saying they're doing. We know that. That is how, you know, reality TV works and Real Housewives work. But also at the same time, 
it can be humbling to someone who's coming into the group. And so she mentions that she felt really extra emotional that they didn't come to her event. Um, I think part of it was if they would have came to the event, the, they would have fil filmed it. So that kind of messed her up right there because who knows that event probably could have been enough to promote, promote her to being full time, which I think they still are going to promote her full time. I think she has to be full time next season. I'm sorry. She has to be. I can't see how you would not do that. It seems like based off the time and the segment that they gave her, she's going to be full time but anyway. Um, but I noticed through this time when she was you know, opening up, none of the ladies apologized for not showing up. They all had excuses. That was kind of, and I found that a little messed up, but I see why they didn't like go back to it because Kiki broke down at this moment. She's like, you know, I never invite people to my place because I'm kind of, I'm humbled in comparison to you guys. Like I live in a two bedroom apartment. It's me and my daughter. And, um, you know, and then she also mentions like, this would have been the opportunity. And I, you know, I'm so used to people bailing on me when I do invite them to things. I hadn't even thrown a birthday party for my daughter because I'm afraid of that happening to her. And she literally just starts breaking down and crying. And um, all the ladies pour into her and say, no, you're valued. We love you. We want to spend time with you. Lisa's like, no, let's do a play date. We could do a play date with our kids. Like, it'll be cool. It'll be great. And this is why I'm also saying I think Lisa and Kiki are going to be good. I think they're going to be actually really close come next season. I see it. it it's totally being telegraphed that that's going to happen because they have so much in common. <laughs> um, and they don't even know it. Um, I think they do now, but I mean, they didn't at the time because, you know, they didn't know Kiki. No one knew Kiki's backstory. But anyway, but Julia does chime in and state that Kiki literally reminds her of a younger version of her, you know, and, and breaks it down even further. And I wasn't even thinking about it this way. I was literally only thinking of it from a melanin standpoint. But like, she's like, she's a single mom who had to make a way in living for herself in a country and a language that she does not speak. Because same thing with Julia. Julia is Russian. She didn't speak English when she moved to this country. She came here for a better opportunity. And mind you, Julia, I think, moved here. Um, Julia's from Soviet Russia. Not, <laughs> I mean, neither of them are good right now. But I mean, she's from USSR Russia. Like that. <laughs> so it's a whole entire, I'm, I'm sure she can see it. And she even mentions like also both, both of them being models. Like she's like, and also the model agency is a very, being a model is a hustle and bustle career. It's hustle. It's, it's, you have to be a hustler to be a model for you to even want to be a model. You have to have a little bit of a hustle mentality in you. And, um, cause I mean, I, at one point in time, I wanted to be a model. Like I went to modeling school for a little bit. I was thinking about doing that career, but I just couldn't manage it at the time because I just had so much stuff going on in my personal life that I couldn't see that. I couldn't see it. Looking back, I kind of will. I kind of wish I would have pursued it, but at the same time, I don't know how I could have because I think in order for you to really pursue being a model, you have to turn on your selfishness up a little bit. You have to be selfish. You have to be. A little bit more in your you have to have a little bit more cutthroat and at that time in my life and this is why i was like i would say pre-teens i did not have that cutthroat in me yet i i didn't have enough confidence to have the cutthroat in me and that is part of what you have to in order to be a model and especially if you're going to be a successful one <laughs> i mean and for me i'm not trying to do anything and not do it successfully so but anyway, 
I, I just love hearing that perspective from Julia because that was another perspective I wasn't hearing it from. And that's another reason why I just love this show. But anyway, next segment. And child, not being given Kiki 16 minutes. <laughs> I feel like Moses' review was Kiki heavy, but that's okay. Y'all already knew I love me some Kiki. But next. So next segment, they're focusing on Miami itself because Miami is another cast member. I thought y'all knew that. Just in case y'all didn't know, Miami is a cast member of this show because Miami is giving what needs to be gave. And as someone who's never, ever wanted to visit Florida, this franchise be making me want to visit Miami. Every time I watch a show, I'm like, dang, maybe I should reconsider and visit Miami. I just, that's the only, this show was the only reason why I have any interest of even stepping foot in Florida. Even Love It, y'all already know Love and Hip Hop Miami didn't do it. <laughs> Speaking of, does anyone that watched this channel, do any of y'all still watch Love and Hip Hop? Y'all ain't retired that yet? I'm not judging. I'm just wondering. I will say this for me. The last time I watched Real, Real um, Love and Hip Hop was during the Jocelyn Hernandez era. Once she was gone, I stopped watching. And I'm glad I did because I was like, oh, man. I love trash TV, but uh, you got to retire it sometimes, right? Not, I mean, Real Housewives to me is a, a little bit of a higher level. Like, reality TV is reality TV. Let's get real. Let's be real. All of it's kind of trash, but like, Love and hip hop is a step right before you get to Zeus. And we know I ain't watching no Zeus network. I don't even know who any of those people are. I, I've, I've aged out of that bracket years ago. Um, yeah. Anyway, I digress. Miami. <laughs> Miami being the housewife. So they're basically showing like kind of just recap of like Miami life and um, the real estate of it all. Um a lot, this was actually um, Nicole heavy because Nicole, because she and Anthony got the coins, they were, they were showing, you know, them shopping for like a boat, condo hunting, all that stuff. But anyway, speaking of Nicole, Nicole, the subject does come out about her, um, her status with her house. So she has this giant, amazing house that she's renovated and it's still not ready yet. And um, Anthony reassured her that it'll be ready at the beginning of April. But it, that's cutting it really close to time, considering the fact that they're supposed to have their baby April 23rd. So, um, yeah. And then Anthony followed up and asked, did they get the boat that they were viewing? And um, they decided not to because they don't know where to store it. They don't have room to actually store it. So they're thinking about building additional like land on that property that they have the house to store the boat. Um, Lisa was joking, but I think she was um, serious. She was like, I'm joking. No, I'm just serious about they can store the boat at Jody's. And, but as long as Jody never can ride it. <laughs> and um, yeah, so they took that with us. And then the next subject comes up is... Um, Sophia, who is Larsa's daughter, she gets $2,500 a month for allowance. And Larsa justifies it. And this is one of those few moments where I actually agree with Larsa. Yeah, $2,500 a month is a lot. But she's in LA, number one. $2,500 for a teenager does seem like a lot, but... It sounds like from what even Larsa explained, because um, Sophia has a deal with Fashion Nova. And she also has a deal with, um, oh, Oscar De La Renta for like modeling. So her daughter models, basically, or is on the verge of becoming a model. Um, I don't know if it's the same kind of modeling as runway modeling or if it's like Instagram modeling or like... Um, influencer modeling i'm not sure which one that is because you know these days you don't have to necessarily be like a model to like be a brand um you could do you could have a brand deal without actually being a model 
Um, but anyway, Sophia makes her own money. She lives in LA. Larsa doesn't live in LA full time. And because also LA is really expensive. And why I mean really, it's not even LA. The state of California is really expensive. It's not cheap to go out to eat and stuff. And I'm assuming her daughter probably doesn't necessarily cook at home and stuff. So if you're going out to eat on a fairly regular basis, taking Ubers everywhere because you're not driving. And also you do have parents that is Scotty Pippen and Larsa Pippen. That seems like a reasonable allowance to me. If you got the coins, it's not, I don't see anything wrong with it anyway. So then the other thing is then, um, Oh, with this conversation, Adriana gives a backhanded compliment. She's like, yeah, Larsa can be rude and not nice a lot of times, but she is a good mom. <laughs> and Larsa goes in about being a victim. She's like, oh, I just had such a hard season. Everyone was just like piling on me. And then Gertie's like, yeah, because you deserved it. And then they they start to try to go back and forth. Um, and then they go on to break. And while they're on break, Gertie is still going in on Larsa. And while Alexia is trying to state to Larsa that you just went too far with all this. Like you could have, you know, you just keep doubling down. If you would have just like apologized or whatever, this could have been done. But you just went too far. And then clown Marcus enters the stage and he where he wanted to be, because you know he wanted to be on the stage, right? We, he already told us that. And he, sta he keeps saying to Larsa, like, just keep being the queen you are. Stay on your throne. Stay on your throne, queen. And starts kissing her and all this, like, on stage. And it's, like, just, like, ill. <laughs> it's giving the ick. Because Jody didn't go on stage during the break, but you made a point to go on stage during the break. And also, too, the rest of these house husbands and boyfriends are nowhere on sight. You're giving thirst. Anyway, next segment. So the next segment is Julia's segment. Um, and we they talk about the organic jelly and how much she <laughs> was charging for that jelly. I think she was charging $30, which was a little high. And everyone's saying, yeah, 15 is a good price. And I disagree. I think 20. I think 20 would be fine. 20 seems like a decent price point, to be honest with you. And I, I know we had that conversation before when they talked about it originally. But 20 is a good price point because it is a celebrity's brand. and Well, a bra, a bra celebrity's brand. And everything's organic. And that is kind of the price point that you actually could get at Whole Foods. Anyway, so then they talk about Julia and her opera tribute to Martina and Andy loved it because he loves Martina. And he loves how tickled Martina was by it. And, and that was the best part of that um, episode was the fact that Martina, love or hate how you thought of Julia singing, Martina loved it, which it was for Martina. So that's all that matters, right? Right. And then um, from there, we talk about, um, so then, you know, Andy asked Adriana, do you think that um, Julia has has it for a music career? And yeah, Adriana gave a very politically correct answer while. So, OK, this this reunion, this third part was I found um, Mirasol slightly annoying this third part because Adriana, this third part finally start dialing it down and stop chiming in constantly. But then it was like, once she stopped chiming down, now Marisol's doing it. And it's just like, ugh. But like, they both are coming off as haters. I mean, it doesn't look good with either of them doing it. And I don't know if someone needs to tell them that, but it's like, it, it doesn't matter which one of y'all doing it. It's not a good look. Anyway, so then from there, they talk about um, Julia, and did she feel weird trying to form a new friendship with Alexia while maintaining her friendship with Adriana? Julia didn't feel away. She's like, no, my friendships are secured. It is what it is. 
Um, and that's one thing I do appreciate and love about Julia being on the show because she does bring a different kind of flavor that is needed. Yeah, her storylines are kind of weird sometimes and sometimes lacking. And sometimes she doesn't have that as much going on. But she does bring a balance to the show that's necessary. And that is one thing I will say in general when it comes to all the leads. Even Larsa, even though I can't stand her a lot of times, well, usually. They all bring something to the table. Don't break something that shouldn't be fixed. The only thing that doesn't need to be fixed. The only thing I will say about Larsa is just get rid of Marcus. Like, because honestly, I find Larsa, I normally don't really have as much, like, energy towards Larsa. But what's made her just really, I don't really like her. Besides, of course, the Gertie comments was really messed up. Is I just don't believe or like her and the Marcus thing. I really just wish they would just, I wish you would just let that go. Anyway. So then from there, um, they talk about, um, they ask, um, Adriana, if they think that um, Alexia and Julia's friendship is genuine from like Alexia's standpoint. Adriana tap dances around a little bit, but the answer I feel like is no. She doesn't think it is, but Julia does. And so really, that's all that matters. And do I think it's genuine? I think it is. I think at first it wasn't, but I think the more Alexia got to know Julia, I think it actually is now because I don't see how you could dislike Julia. <laughs> she seems like from what I've gathered and how she is on the show, because again, I don't know any of these people in real life. She seems pretty likable. So even if you came in with some ulterior motives, I don't see her not being likable. Anyway, so... Then the next question comes up, will their friendship last? Because Larsa and Lisa made the comment that their friendship won't last. Um, I think there's going to be some turbulence. Because that is part of Alexia's personality. In all of Alexia's relationships, there's going to be turbulence. But whether it lasts or not, I think it's, it's left to be seen. And also, too, I think it also depends on... Uh, if Adriana and Julia's relationship will last. But Julia has made a point where her relationship with Adriana isn't going anywhere. But I did notice with this season especially, and that's why I appreciate it, is that Julia will hold Adriana accountable. She's not a yes, a yes person friend. Like They have a true friendship where they can check each other. So because they actually have that friendship where they can check each other in a respectful manner, I don't see that friendship going anywhere, but I don't know. I think that might be why I say that Alexia and Julia is going to have turbulence because Alexia don't like being checked when she's wrong. She don't like it. And Julia is the type that will do it though. Um, but we saw a little bit of this during the reunion last season when if Alexia is truly sorry, she will apologize because she actually did apologize to Julia last season, which she rarely apologizes. So if you get an Alexia to apologize, but it's still questionable. Why does she apologize? Does she apologize because she meant it? Julia felt she did, but a lot of us, and I'm not real, I'm not sure if I feel this way or not. I'm actually just like, I'm a wait and see kind of girl with it. I'm on the fence with it. Um, she, some people could say she apologized because of the backlash. But anyway, so. Then the whole entire, so then the next, the last subject before they close this kind of segment, this segment is, are, is Martina and her going to resume the adopting a baby? Um, are they going to resume adopting a baby? Because now that um, Martina's cancers are in remission, are they going to resume it? And yes, they are. They're resuming it. And they actually adopt, they actually hired a second agency to try to expedite the process. And they're giving it a year to see if this, if anything happens. If it doesn't happen within a year, they're just going to be like, it's not, it's not their time anymore because, you know, they're getting older and they want it where it makes sense, where they still will be able to raise a child 
and still be around. Um, and they want a girl. So, I mean, not a girl. They, they prefer a boy. They prefer a boy because Julia, <clears throat> all her children are girls. Um, so she does want a boy. And then Kiki jokes about, well, you can take my whole family in and you'll have that. <laughs> and that's how that segment ends. Next, we talk about Mexico. And um, basically, they talk about um, Kiki eating the cricket and the fact that Alexia peer pressured to doing that only for her not to do that at all because Alexia is afraid of bugs. <laughs> And then um, it was a lot of fun little segment. And then they talked about Adriana and her performance. And she was just very happy. And over moon, she got the opportunity. Um, and then from there, we get to the uh, undercard of the Mexico trip, which was Alexia versus um, Larsa. And the Todd comment and the tequila brand comment. So the Todd comment coming from Larsa, the tequila brand comment coming from Alexia. And whose side am I on in this? I'm kind of on the Alexia side of the fence. I am. And um, because um, they do end up going back and forth um, and... Um, Gertie chimed in on this, so it was actually, it, um, being kind of like more of the voice of reason, like kind of explaining why Alexia feel, feels this way a little bit more, and literally calls her product pushing Pippin, <laughs> because she is a product pusher. She constantly does it, but it's not in a way where it's like sleek and not obvious. It's like every single event and she doesn't bring anything else but that and um Larsa's all like I'm bringing gifts I don't understand why you guys would feel away and it's not that they feel away it's just it comes off kind of obnoxious every time that it's an Alarsa event it's not a Larsa event just for it to be a Larsa event it's always product pushing the only time where she had an event that wasn't just a product pushing event was that party that she threw for Marcus after him being gone for five days. But everything else she does is very product pushing, but like it's so obnoxiously product pushing. <laughs> um, and, but I will say this too. Adriana does come off a little bit, not Adriana. Alexia does come off a little bit as a hater in this because she just kind of does. I'll just say the reason why um, I would say I feel like she does is I think as much as Alexia says, I'm secure, I'm secure, I'm a star, I'm a star, I'm a star. I think she is slightly insecure about the fact that she doesn't have as much going on outside of the show as some of the other ladies do. Um, Larsa clearly has a lot going on outside the show. I mean, Larsa is a household name that a lot of us knew before the show. I didn't even know she was even on this show before. I knew about Larsa because of, you know, Scottie Pippen and that crazy divorce. It took forever for her to happen. Her escapades with like the Kardashians and whatnot. Um, so I can see she might not be coming from a place of, of saying, of feeling away because she's product pushing but as a viewer, it is obnoxiously annoying that that's what she's always... It does always feel like she's doing that. Um, at the same time, though, um, Alexia felt away and felt very offended when um, Larsa was, you know, saying, I don't have a Todd, I don't have a Todd. And because it's insinuating Todd does everything for her, which I think is the other reason why I'm saying that Alexia clearly has some insecurities about it because it 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 did insinuate that you know Alexia needs a man to be successful and so it felt like a personal attack I feel like too so I think they both had their points when it came to this and look at me going 
<laughs> I'm right in the middle now. I went from going all in and being on the side of Adriana, not Adriana, Alexia, to then being in the middle. But that's, you know, that's how it works with me. But, um, really, I think also Alexia's like, but girl, you had Scottie Pippen and Scottie Pippen money. But, elect, but then like, you know, Lars is like, yeah, but I haven't had, I haven't had the support of a Scottie Pippen in six years. Yeah, financially she's good because she is getting half his retirement or whatever, but she doesn't really have the support. Which, that's why, side note, that's the other reason why I don't believe the story of her and Marcus being together, actually. Because she pretty much told her herself here. It's like, so, Marcus isn't helping you? Because you kind of just said that he isn't. So that ring that you got on the season finale, did you pay for that? Because I kind of already didn't think that he did. Because I know Michael Jordan cut him off financially. <laughs> Lars is a liar, okay? Let's just be clear, you know? It, and it's going to come up again towards the end of this reunion. But she's a liar. And she doesn't even realize she talks so much and is in defensive so much that she... If you're listening, you realize she's lying because it's like, but you said this over here and now you're saying this over here. The math doesn't math. But anyway, moving on. They're still talking about Mexico, but now they get to the main event, the thing that I care the most about, which by the way, side note, there's a lot of things that they did not talk about during this reunion. They didn't talk about um, the ketamine treatments at all. They did not do that. Um, they also didn't talk about the um, Valley of the Dows. They never did mention that part. Or really even Gertie going down during the medical thing or them going to the church. There's a lot that happened in the Miami and they didn't include it all. <laughs> I'm telling you, this, this show is night and day in comparison to the other franchises. I, I feel like in other reunions... Everything gets covered and then it gets like, you know, watered down to the point where it's just like, okay, we, this could have been two parts. Miami, I'm literally, as I'm reviewing this, I'm noticing things that they didn't cover, that they literally could have covered and they never did. Isn't that wild? They also didn't even really talk about Lisa and her lying with her perfumer. Child, I'm... As I'm reviewing this, I'm just realizing they missed a lot of things that they did not cover during this three-part reunion. And there are so much other things that happened there. The old cars, them going to... Man, they missed a lot. That is wild to me. I'm sorry. I just realized that, that they just... There was a lot they didn't cover still. They could have did four parts. I mean, that would have been fluff, but they... They could have done four parts. That's how that's how meaty the Real Housewives of Miami was this season. They had enough material where they probably could have got away with not really four parts. I'll say three and a half part. Like extend one of the reunions to be a little bit longer. But maybe they cut it a little bit short because of um, Dr. Nicole being pregnant. I can imagine they would because, yeah. Anyway, so... On to the boat ride from hell and the main event. The main reason why we're at part three, because we're like, okay, are they going to have this conversation that is very much needed? And the question that comes up is, Lisa, do you regret feeding the dogs? And she stated that she wanted to, but she does regret feeding the dogs. And the way I read that is you don't regret feeding the dogs. You only regret feeding the dogs because of backlash you received. Because she still doesn't understand why that was messed up. And the reason why I say she still doesn't understand that this was messed up is because of what happens next. <laughs> so Kiki, because also too, Lisa makes the excuse that she was having a tough time. And to me, I've never constituted having a tough time to being entitled. So you become entitled when you're having a tough time. 
I feel like you're already, I feel like you have to already be entitled to become entitled. I, I, I'm just confused. I, I'm confused by her response. And she, this is not the first time where she has a response where I'm just kind of like, did you really learn or are you just more or less like, or you saw the backlash and now you want to pull back? Anyway. But Kiki pretty much gets her together in a hurry. She's like, she basically calls around and says, you, you were acting entitled the whole time. It wasn't just there. This whole time you're acting entitled. And the other thing that Kiki threw in her face, because Kiki did her homework during, before she did this reunion. She's like, you forgot where you came from. You forgot where you came from. And that right there to me was a read. That was a read of all reads. Because I think that's why it feels even a different way. Because it's not like Lisa came from money. This man, Lenny, brought her to the fold of money. And then she disowns her family. Even though at first she tried to say... Because in previous seasons, she tried to, like, in previous seasons, she said that she disowned her family. Or her family disowned her. Like, she had a whole entire different tune in regards, in regards to her family. And she even tried to say this season before that her, that Lenny's mom is, is a mom to her. Only for Lenny's mom to basically treat you like basula and treat you like you are nothing and basically flip on you. According to you, your words. And the fact that you chose this man over your family, who was, because he was, he, we find out in like the season finale that not only he was treating her, her family like trash, the mom was too. His mom. And you still decide to put a ring on it and marry that man for the lifestyle. So when Kiki says you forgot where you came from, that is different. That is way different. It's kind of her saying you sold out. <laughs> and, um, and then she says, like, you treat me like I'm below you. And you, like, by you doing what you were doing with those dogs, you literally were treating me like I'm below you and you're doing all this. And that's not, that's not cool. And you're going to respect me. I love that Kiki was like, by the way, you're going to respect me. I'm not going to ask for it. I'm telling you, you're going to respect me. And I'm like, child, in recent weeks, I've been having to tell people that. I'm like, <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Sometimes we just got to be assertive and just tell them what it is. And people, people don't like assertiveness, especially sometimes if you... They don't like the assertiveness. It's not, and, and assertiveness and aggression, they're not the same. They're not family. They're not even kin. Okay? It's telling you what it is and what it ain't. It is what it is. But anyway. But pretty much Lisa's still not getting it. <laughs> she's still, whew, all that goes over her head because she's just like, I don't feel that way about you though. And it hurts that you think I feel that way about you. And, but I will say this, I'm glad that Lisa's not having the reaction she was having during the whole entire season of yelling or whatever. She's actually kind of more back to more of a reasonable way because it seems like the difference is with this reunion. And I think what helped with this, I think Julia kind of helped buffer this. I'll be honest. And you want to know why I think that? When Julia came at her woman to woman and she actually felt heard and talked to her and she made the apology. I think that actually softened Lisa up just in general. If everything's being filmed in order, I think that is kind of what's happening here. And so Lisa's like, I, I really, it hurts that you think I feel that way. That's not my heart. That's not where our, what it is. And she's not really, she's coming at her combatively, but it's not in a disrespectful way. It's more or less like, why would you say that type thing? It, it's still Karen, but she turned the Karen way down. Like, I actually was able to hear Lisa a little bit more here. 
And then she was also open, I noticed, to feedback from the others to mediate. Because Gertie did try to mediate this situation. She's like, look, it, you can't say that. Like, you're making these jokes about her hitting you again, her throwing a juice box at you again, this, that, and this, and, that, and that's not okay. And Lisa's like, but that's really my sense of humor. That's how I joke. Like, I, I, I was trying to be funny. And Gertie and even um, Alexia chime in. They're like, but you said it a lot. So it didn't come. Because you kept reintroducing the joke, it didn't come off as a joke. And then even, Am even Andy finally chimes in. He's like, look. It, it, it it's given microaggression you know it it, it looks different because they were trying to explain to her like perception's reality and perception it isn't going to be perceived well because by the way this is before i feel like this is even before kiki really knows like lisa's background they didn't know each other's background like that so if I'm going face value, I'm going to take what you're doing a different way. And even me, when I was reviewing it, I forgot about Lisa's background. I forgot she's partially Jamaican. She is a multiracial girl. She's a multiracial girl. Yeah, she presents, she's definitely more white passing, but she's not, she's, she's pretty much in all practical purposes. She's a mutt. She has, she has all the, there's, there's United Nations in her. Okay. And so Lisa, from her perspective, she's like, I really don't feel that way because I don't feel that way. And that's how Lisa's seeing it. But if you don't know all that, it comes across a certain way. And even Gertie was trying to explain it. And I think that that is where we finally got somewhere where they're like, because even Gertie's like, yeah, she like, she's Jamaican. You're Jamaican. You, you understand this because she said that she's like, oh, because I think when Andy chimed in, she really thought about it. She's like, oh, wow. And yeah, it was just a major bad misunderstanding. But really bad. <laughs> because if that would have been the one time, I think we would have just chalked it off. The problem is it wasn't. <laughs> so while this is happening, though, um, Jody and Marcus chime in in the back. Jody's kind of level-headed about it for the most part. Like, yeah, it just seems like a lot of miscommunication <laughs> happening here. And Marcus, the clown, kind of minimizes Kiki but he is level-headed about a little bit here, too. He wasn't as clownish, but I still didn't like that. I really just wish both... I, I really wish the guys weren't there. I'll just say that. Um, because I didn't care about the perspective. <laughs> I mean... Because to me, if you're not going to protect... If you, you're not adding any value to the conversation, so why are you there? I'll just say that. But anyway, then they go into like Lisa and Kiki um, when Kiki was opening up about her past and the way she reacted to how Kiki is reacting to her past. And Lisa states that her delivery was terrible. But then Andy's like, but not the actual statement. And she's like, no, that wasn't good either. Like, <laughs> She kind of does like she doesn't double down. She's like, no, it just wasn't good. Like at the end of the day, the issue is neither of them know each other, really know each other's backstory. So there were a lot of assumptions happening. Even I even did it, too, when I was reviewing and watching it. But at the same time, Kiki was stating facts and was being very direct. And I think. And, and because we also did get the apology from Lisa to Kiki before the season even wrapped. There's no need for another apology because they already did apologize to each other. Lisa especially did apologize about how she was lashing out. Um, but perception-wise, it looked wild. And hopefully Lisa learns to not do that. 
And hopefully they do develop a friendship because I think they really do want to be friends with each other. I can literally tell during this third part of the reunion that they really want to be friends. I can see them being friends and getting past that rough patch of the guy at the beginning and move past it. I totally, it's not a non-move passing situation. So they basically said they're going to take baby steps and move on. Okay, so next we go on to kind of trying to wrap things up here. Um, so they talk a little bit about Adriana and her music career and what's next for her with that. Um, Adriana is going on tour with Messi um, Beckham with Emilio Esteban. Um, again, I'll just state this. I think I stated it a little bit earlier in the review because I just got really excited because, again, I love this show. Y'all probably going to get sick of me saying that, but... It's true. Um, Alex, um, Adriana was definitely treated a little bit more like a friend of this whole entire reunion. <laughs> they gave her really no segment by herself. I think Marisol had a segment and Alexia didn't. Um, yeah. And then, um, so then also, um, Nicole and her becoming a girl mom they're talking about how she's looking forward to that and her buying you know the baby clothes for girls and i will say this um as an auntie a lifetime auntie it is fun to shop for baby clothes for girls the, the boys babies clothes just are not as cute in my opinion but maybe it's because i'm kind of a girly girl but i'm also you know i, I i'm sporty too Look at me, I'm wearing like, I'm wearing athletic clothes right now with like a, with my bonnet. <laughs> Fashionable bonnet. This is like my bonnet, side note. I know this isn't related to anything, but this is a bonnet that I wear when I don't feel like doing my hair, but like looks all right to go outside because I don't want to look like, I don't want to look wild crazy going outside. So when I don't feel like doing my hair or if like my hair is in braids, you know, before I, tr you know, make them twisties and style it. These are the kind of bonnets I wear so I could be outside and be fashionable. And I try to and I have bonnets to kind of match outfits. So I'll match with the outfit. Just side note. But anyway. So um, from there they talk to um, Lisa in her next chapter. And that she's actually in a much happier place. Um, so the anger's kind of gone. And we can tell. I mean clearly. Because she was way more consolable during this reunion. And she was definitely more open to listening um i think it's based off of who she really wants to listen to though i will say that because i don't know there's still unresolved issues to me um because i'm kind of predicting next season based off this reunion i think there's still some unresolved issues between lisa and gertie i think they might have some issues come next season um but um yeah so we also find out that um, Lisa opened up an organization to help women transition, you know, better with the divorce and prenups um, and help help them with prenups, you know, so that everything is fair. Basically trying to make lemonade out of lemons because of her situation. Um, and then Marisol kind of. They kind of go back, back and forth briefly, briefly because Marisol claimed that she's the one who gave her the name of the organization. But she was like, no, Jody came up with that. And um, um, Marisol asked like Adri um, Alexia, like, isn't that right? I, I came up with that name. And Alexia's like, I don't remember that. A little breadcrumbs. Um, <laughs> a little bit of breadcrumbs. So then from there, they talk about... Um, Larsa, Larsa didn't bring anything. They didn't really go much into that. She's in, she's in a happy place. That's her answer, which kind of attests to what everyone's been saying about Larsa. <laughs> and then um, from there we go to a Marisol and her marriage, her marriages or her marriage, um, marriage. I should say this whole entire time, marriage. Um, and she basically states like, yeah, we've gotten married in Mexico. We got married in Scotland. We don't have any legal papers here, but I'm in my fifties and this is how I'm going to do things. Like, this is how we're living our lives. We're happy and we're in a good place. And we're just going to continue on with this. I'm like, honestly, once you're a certain age, getting married 
doesn't really matter. And also in her case, she said this would been, this would be her third marriage. I mean, after a couple failed marriages, there's no point in like doing it again. I mean, <laughs> anyway, so then, um, from there, they, um, she explains, oh, from there we go to Kiki and her finding her voice. Um, so they go into that, that Kiki's finally found her voice. And then we then go to Julia and building, um, new bonds and, you know, nurturing her old bonds with the friendships with the group. And she's like, yeah, as much as you think, you know, the group, you things change, things transition, and you just continue to learn more about this group. But one thing I still don't think is real is Larsa's butt. <laughs> and Larsa feeling attacked because everything for her feels like an attack. She rebuts with um, Julia saying, well, you like black penises. I don't understand your relationship between you and Martina when you like black penises. And all the ladies are just like, what does that have to do with anything, Larsa? <laughs> they all kind of shut Larsa down on that. Even Andy did there. Because um, Julia also, because Julia is not the one to argue with. I find, I find that Julia is like interesting. She's an interesting sparring partner because you're not going to phase her. Julia gives, I'm grown. I know who I am and you can't tell me nothing type of girl. And she was like, yeah, I like black memeses. So what? <laughs> That's literally what she was like. She's like, Anne. <laughs> and then Andy was like, two things can be true. Why is that an issue? And then Lars is like, well, it's not, it's not. It's like, did we forget that Julia said she was bisexual? She never said she was a lesbian. Julia's bisexual. <laughs> so her liking the, the, the penis, I mean... How would she have multiple? How would she have multiple baby daddies if she didn't like the penis? How would she not have? I mean, and she's also upset. It like child. Anyway, so then from there, um, it goes to Alexi and building bridges and resolving things. And um. Alexi's like, yeah, I did try my best to resolve things and build bridges, but one of the things that are still outstanding that I need to resolve is I do need to make things right with Nicole. And she does state, like, I don't understand why we are good and then we're not. And none of us understand it either. And I don't think it's a Dr. Nicole thing. I think it's a you thing. And hopefully, Adrian, um, hopefully, Alexia gets out of her own way with that, out of her own way of that, and they can actually truly be cool and stay cool. Um, but the way I'm kind of seeing how things are going, I don't know. Marisol might need to count her days left on this show. Because it seems to me that. And and I've and, and it's been kind of a thing that you could tell during the season that this was happening, and even um, Marisol made a comment during this during this reunion about it. It seems like Alexia is trying to distance herself from Marisol, and if that happens, Marisol is no longer going to be on the show because Alexia is the only reason why Marisol is on the show. Um, other than, I guess if Marisol stays cool with Kiki or something, maybe, but I mean, she's kind of the main reason similar to like with Adriana and Julia, as long as Julia's on the show, Adriana will still be on the show because their friendship ain't going anywhere. If, if Dr. Nicole, I think unless all three of them become, can become cool, which it seems like based off of how things have been going. I don't know if that can happen. I think Alexia would neither be need to be completely cool with Nicole or it be I, I can't see it going all three ways because 
as much as we make it look like it is an Alexia thing not being cool with Dr. Nicole, we keep forgetting Marisol plays a huge role in it too. Like it seems like both of them have it out for Nicole. So yeah. Anyway. So um while all this is happening and they're talking things over with Alexia and building bridges and wanting to resolve things, Larsa is still stuck on being called a liar and child the hit dog will holler. I'll just say that. And um, so she confronts Alexia one more time about, she's like, I really think you need to apologize to the whole group because you basically said, you say that all of us lie. That's messed up. And She's and also Lars is the only one that's offended by this. I mean, Dr. Nicole doesn't feel right about it either, but she's not really, really hanging on to it. She's like, whatever. It's a throwaway comment. Who cares? Um, but then the follow-up question, well, who in the group is a liar? And this is according to Alexia. I want to know what y'all think about this. So let's go on. Pardon me. I had to burp and I was not going to burp on mic because that's kind of gross. But anyway, so, um, According to Alexia, these are the people that she thinks are liars, but I think we should talk about it together as a family and see if you agree or not. Let's do it. So she says, Adrian's the biggest liar of them all. Yeah, I don't think she's the biggest liar of them all, but I think she does have an interesting relationship with the truth. And only when it comes to you two. Well, when it comes to... Um, Alexia and Marisol. I think when it comes to everything else, I don't see Adriana lying. And I'm not even sure she's lying all the way. What do y'all think? Okay, so and, um, she says Dr. Nicole lies. And mainly about the whole thing that happened at the brunch. I don't think Dr. Nicole lied, but I think she did withhold information because, child, I didn't know that additional information until this reunion, and it made me think, like, oh, you might have, you might have assisted in the setup. Because at first, I thought you were completely innocent. You made it seem like on during the season you were completely innocent. But then when you say the additional things you said during this reunion, I was like, oh, <laughs> You kind of knew what you were doing. You didn't completely know what you were doing, but you kind of knew what you were doing because you're going based off your own ignorance of thinking everything's kumbaya. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Lisa is a truth teller. I will say Lisa has an interesting relationship with the truth as well. Not necessarily when it comes to the ladies, but maybe when it comes to the situation, when it comes to her and Lenny. And how bad things were because you were saying everything was great and wonderful until Lenny asked for that divorce and he had that high mic moment. And you were saying your family abandoned you and all this other stuff until, oh, you had to crawl back to your family. Or so we know she'd be lying. Um, <laughs> Gertie, I haven't found anything that she hasn't told the truth about yet. She is, I think she is a truth teller. Alexia. Usually the person is calling out if someone's telling the truth or not ain't telling the truth all the way. Because <laughs> someone who tells the truth don't need to call out when people are lying or not. And, and let's be real here. We're doing all this in fun. We all lie. I lie. Everybody lies. There's no such thing as everyone being a truth teller and telling the truth. That's. This is this argument is kind of a dumb argument in my opinion because everybody lies. It's just who be lying all the time and who who has an interesting relationship with the truth and who lives in a land delusion and or who just sometimes withholds information or who just gives white lies here and there. That's that's actually the true argument of the layers of lies. Cuz everybody be, everyone lies. It's just which kind of liar are you? what kind of liar are you? I feel like that would be a better subject. What kind of liar are you? Because everyone lies. But anyway. So, um, Julia, truth teller. Yeah. Almost too brutally truthful. <laughs> when it comes to this show, yes. Kiki, yes. <laughs> Direct as F. 
And then she says, Marisol forgets things. She doesn't remember things. Actually, that's where she says she doesn't remember things. And child Marisol was not happy with that answer at all. And when I mean not at all, not at all. And pretty much after that, Marisol was stewing for the rest of this time. And I'm, I'm, and more happened after that. So let's move on. So this is towards the end of the reunion. So then we kind of one more time recap and talk about, um, you know, Gertie and her cancer journey and her moving past it and moving forward. Larsa finally apologizes and gives her a hug. Um, Kiki is like, can you, can you guys kiss each other and make up? And then <laughs> Gertie is like, not too much on that. The, the hug was enough. And back to my original question. Y'all think that was genuine. I don't think it was. And I don't think they're cool. I don't think they're ever going to be cool again. I think Larsa and, um, Gertie will never be okay. I think they'll move forward for story, but I think there's going to be something else that causes things to kick off again because Larsa can't be trusted. <laughs> She's pretty much shown that this was a huge testament that she cannot be trusted. Um, so then from there, um, Adrian asked, can she read a Bible verse to the group? And Marisol is just giving so much hate to her while she says that. And she's like, no, no, I got something. And it was an ecclesiastic verse. And it was a verse that basically was very fitting. And it summed things up. And it summed the reunion up. And it basically was a message of full circle. And so the reunion wraps up with Larsa's tequila. And them doing the tequila shots with Larsa's tequila. The bottle was interesting looking. It was actually enough for I'm just like, okay, Larsa. I might buy that tequila all so I can have that bottle. That is a nice looking bottle. That presentation's giving. I will say that. Um, and then Gertie does a toast. And then they close the reunion, the filming of the reunion, you know, officially with a surprise performance up of Anna Marie, um, no, Ava, is it Ava Marie? Ava Marie? I, th I think it's Ava Marie. Um, that, you know, the famous opera song. Um, from Jonathan, who did the opera duet with Julia. And then, so he starts singing. And then out of nowhere, Julia pulls out a mic and starts singing too. Clearly, she's lip singing. Um... I, at first, I couldn't tell. I think, um, I think Jonathan was doing a little bit both. I think he was singing, but then he also they had they clearly had backtrack. I mean, they're gonna have a backtrack, and honestly, all artists have a backtrack. But I feel like Julia was leaning heavy on that backtrack, <laughs> and Jonathan, when he did his solo part at first, it seemed like he was actually performing it himself, and then when it up tempo because by the way this was a dance remix of the song i was like all right and so they're all dancing and stuff at the end and that cook and then while all this is happening marisol is still seated there stewing while everyone else is getting up and dancing i mean everyone else everyone else pretty much looks like they resolved all their issues for the most part minus her and then the reunion is over but it ends with like a cliffhanger. And so it just makes you want more. Where Marisol literally confronts Adriana about the comments. About her not remembering things. She's like, way to throw me under the bus, bro. What was that? And like just going off and they're bickering. And then the reunion ends. That was Miami. <laughs> I know this was a long review. It was a long review, but I had a lot to say. And I'll be honest, I wanted to also state what I expect for next, what I see is going to be happening next season. And side note, for those who watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, that the third part of the reunion for that might be longer too, for the same reason, because I could just see some storylines brewing during this reunion. 
which is very hopeful and very promising. And again, I love that they did not include everything that happened with Miami. They had a lot of stuff that they could have included in this reunion and they didn't include it. And that is telling of how great of a season they had. And that's why this re this recap is much longer because I had to give them their flowers. But anyway, that does conclude um, the Real Housewives of Miami reunion. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.